Hey everyone, uh, I'm Severin. Um, my passion is photography and I'm fortunate enough to work in photography. And today I'm going to talk about the new language of photography and why I believe we live in the most exciting age of photography ever. Um, and why people are talking like Photoshop. So look at this photo. Um, you see in this photo, let's go 100 years back. These people all look very grim. So think about why. Some people say it's because of the exposure times of photography, people couldn't smile that long. But actually, back then, culture didn't um, say that uh, it was kind of stupid to, um, to smile in a picture. So look at this guy today. Um, he um, got famous a month ago because he posts hundreds of selfies uh, on his photo. And I wonder why. What will people in 100 years think about the photos we share today? Look at the numbers. Um, we see that actually every day nowadays, 500 million people, uh, pictures have been taken and shared on Snapchat, on Flickr, Instagram, Facebook, other services, and it's growing exponentially. So, but let's not talk about numbers. Let's talk about why people are sharing photos. Um, the reason why a person shares a photo like that is not because she wants to document something, but she wants her friends to know, look, my life is awesome right now, like this photo so I feel better about myself. <laughs> we have um, different styles in photography, hundreds of different styles nowadays. One is latte art. People taking photos of their coffee or food porn, people taking photos of their food. The square format basically had a huge comeback through the rise of Instagram in the past few years. We have sex. Look at that. It's a very interesting thing. I found it yesterday. There's a chocolate cake, there's a Nintendo, there's a nude picture. This work girl actually takes pictures of herself naked because she wants people to comment on her picture and say you're sexy and so on. She replied to every single comment. We have street photography. Completely new rise since uh, street photography was basically invented by Henri Cartier-Bresson in the 60s. Had a huge comeback because of the iPhone, because people can basically snap pictures and uh, not be seen snapping those pictures and are doing a lot of street photography nowadays. Um, we have Google Class photography. This is a guy, he's an Emmy Award winning media, uh, multimedia journalist, and he shares pictures on Instagram that he takes with Google Class. So uh, what you see here is that basically the device uh, we use for taking photos also defines how we take photos. You see on the left here uh, um, the famous movie Blow Up from 1967, uh, guy in this pose, we see on the right the iPhone. So let's think about what do the devices we have nowadays enable us to shoot and why are we shooting like that. So I looked at people, uh, at the most popular Instagram people, not brands, not celebrities, but people who became from totally nobodies to people with 500,000 uh, following. I realized they all take the same pictures. They all take pictures like that, like that. It's all about showing where you are. It's all about the first person's perspective. And I believe that if you look at these pictures and analyze them, you can see a very certain visual language coming out of that, um, which is central perspective, feet, and so on. Now, this is a picture by Nike. Nike is one of the most popular brands on Instagram with millions of followers. This picture got 100,000 likes in one day because they understand the visual language of Instagram. They did exactly what the most popular Instagram users are doing. Let's look at other services like Wine. Wine is uh, relatively new. And when Vine came up with these like uh, six seconds videos, there was no real language, you know, but people started using it in creative ways and people had huge followings in very short time because they found the language of that. So what can we learn out of that? First of all, photography nowadays is about communication and it's like a language. So like in language, there are buzzwords. People, old people use it differently than young people. It changes constantly by the way you use it. Photography nowadays has many different meanings. It's all about community experience. Photography is not about freezing that one image anymore. It's about a constant flux of images, a constant experience of community, of people sharing photos, of people consuming photos through the devices. It's also a, a language of awesome, which means everything has to be positive. Now look at this smile and you think, oh yeah, that's great, but look at it for longer and you think, well, it's kind of creepy <laughs> all the time. You know? So self-expression must be positive nowadays. Now think about the possibilities of uh, actually other ways of expression. One thing I think is beautiful about photography nowadays is you have direct and immediate look, a look into uh, people's lives. Look at that, how these people hang out in Baghdad. Would you have known that situation with like media? So photography is changing immediately because it's not about Western people coming to kind of, you know, uh, countries, photographing them and uh, projecting the image onto these cultures. It's these cultures soon uh, representing themselves and controlling the image of themselves. Most of all, what I think is uh, exciting about nowadays is that people actually have fun doing photography. 
Um, until recently, you know, photography was all about big DSLR cameras, male person debating about uh, the golden ratio and so on. Nowadays, millions of people have fun doing that. Ah, I think yes, I guess I got started. <laughs>